Good evening. Mm -hmm. Should I start? Saki there? Yes, brother. Okay. So yes, uh, a wonderful diamond, golden, uh, all the jewels you can think of morning for all of you. Here it is evening for us. And I'm sure this morning and this day, um, that is 27th of August, will bring lots of lovely things for all of you. You're starting off your day. Of course, I'm sure you all did Amrit Veda. <clears throat> and now you're going to listen to uh, some very deep aspects from two of the Murlis that you already read and maybe discussed on Monday. So there were two Murlis, I guess, on and that day, you know, both were from 19th of October, 1975. So we'll go deeper into these movies and um, let's see what evolves out of these. And so the first movie is, um, is what Baba is seen. <coughs> Pardon me. The st sad state of affairs of what is happening to the world. And Baba is seeing this uh, from the point of view of the seed of the tree of humanity. And this tree of humanity at this time is in a state of extreme decay. And as the seed of the tree, um, you know, normally we would think that the seed of the tree would feel bad about the fact that the tree is in a state of decay, but that's not what's happening with Baba. Baba is seeing in a very detached way, but he wants us to also see the entire tree, its current state of affairs, so that we understand that at this time, there is no point in us trying to get attached or getting attached to this old tree. And what he's seeing that, say, saying, um, and what he's seeing, and that's what he's conveying to us, that that really speaking, you can divide this whole tree into four different authorities. The first authority is the authority of, that is the political authority, the governance. The second is the religious. And then the common masses, let's say. The, there are two more, two more um, authorities. The one authority is the devotees, you know, who are you know, so up here is the political, and here is the religious. Then here there would be the devotees, and here would be another segment of common masses who are being governed by the, the those who are governing. So all four have authority, but however, that authority now has become very tamopadan. So, for example, the political authority authority of, of uh, governance, that has become corrupt for sure. There is so much happening in the world of politics, which Baba has kind of thrown some light on, which we don't have to go deep into. But on the other hand, the religious authority, how much of uh, hypocrisy that's happening there and how they are trying to manipulate the devotees who are so innocent, they're trying the level best to, you know, get the maximum for themselves. The devotees, on the other hand, are so confused. They go, just like, you know, people in the world go shopping for clothes, shopping for shoes, and some people go shopping for doctors. There are these devotees who are shopping for gods, you know, so they don't know who God is, and they try to see God is in everyone, God in everything, and so on and so forth. So there is a lot of confusion there as well. So everywhere there's confusion, everywhere there is hollowness, there's emptiness. And Baba says very nicely that just like something is when it's eaten away by termites, on the outside it may look beautiful. There may be some external beauty, but internally it becomes hollow. So there is a tug of war everywhere, there's fighting, there's jealousy, there is war, there is pain, there is suffering. So people can't sleep, there's insomnia. So many things are happening everywhere. People are doing bad deeds in the form of, in the name of religion. But really speaking, there should be tapasya. You know, there should be good deeds, tapasya, there should be disinterest, 
none of these um you know are obvious at this time everything has become totally tamapadan yeah so we don't have to go too much into this i gave you a gist of all of these four different authorities now what is baba wanting from us yeah I read these few sentences now what is baba saying so baba saw, saw how powerful the foundation was so while this old tree is is in its state of decay it's dying a new tree is being created by baba himself he's the seed of the tree so he is now creating a new tree with all of us we are at the roots we are master seeds we are the roots and so we are co-creating this new tree and so we brahmins this brahmin life is the foundation for the new tree and baba is seeing how powerful the foundation was while seeing all bad conditions all around father brahma had the thought that the old tree should be finish right now through the tapasya the pasvi form of the children and the fire of yoga so brahma baba and of course shiv baba also wants us to now not just co create a new tree but co destroy the old tree which has become so tamopadan through our tapasvi form and through the fire of yoga and so baba was seeing us as a spiritual army so baba sees us baba is wanting us to become spiritual army he's seeing us as as army men as military men as as warriors really and so through our tapasya and truly speaking you know whenever i hear about the army you we know, we are spiritual army we are the best army the most elite army in on this planet at this time for all times really but you see when you when we talk about army when we talk about being a warrior there's some aspects that come with that and one of which is discipline you know the other is is courage and the third at least you know three things which come in my mind right away which baba talks about all the time is ever ready so if you if you look at this you know i was thinking that maybe we can go a little deeper into the understanding which i have received from baba's murlis where on one hand again baba talks about you know the a total fearlessness you know courage you know and then discipline so let's take one topic at a time fearlessness so i was thinking and i've always been thinking that in those days also back in india i remember here to when there are big natural calamities or something big has happened then when no one else can handle things then the military is called and let's say there are floods extreme floods and people's homes are being washed people are being uh, washed away people are dying drowning what not then nobody can help anything say a dam has burst and so who, who's in called it is a military and the military will never say i'm scared if the military says i'm scared then what's the point it it kind of um seems counter productive so the military comes in that everybody feels safe yes they are here they will try to do the best to save us so if we see ourselves as spiritual army as warriors then at least one thing that has to happen for all of us is there should be fearlessness and total courage nothing should shake us nothing should tell us that or make us make a question um, you know our ability can i do this or can i or, or will i fail sometimes i feel one of the biggest fears that many people have in today's world is fear of failure and that's why they are not ready to you know step out of the status quo because that feels so much more comforting so are we afraid and if we are afraid we can't be called a spiritual army then second discipline look let's look at this discipline here whatever happens for military you know, they have a timetable they wake up early in the morning um, in most places i think you you know especially in us what i heard is some of these marine corps these are of delta forces navy seals these people have to a uh, green berets these people have to wake up no matter what however cold it may be however wet it mode may be they have to wake up before 4 they have to go and run like god knows how many miles 
in the rain, in the cold, and then come back. And they have to have everything so disciplined. Their shoes have to be clean. Their noses have to be clean. Their guns have to be clean. Everything is being checked. You know, is their bed uh, made or not? They can't just throw their bed in whatever way and then run out to, um, you know, their practice. Everything is disciplined. They can eat only at this time. They can sleep only at this time. And that's when they get the power. And I remember so well, there was a short video I was watching for a long back of uh, one of these drill sergeants who had said very wonderfully to these um, Navy SEALs, you know, when they were training, there's, there's something called as a hell week in America. They call it a hell week where for one week, and these, um, these Navy SEALs have to go through this training where they don't get to sleep for that week and they have to go through, you know, just the most rigorous training on this planet. And most people feel that and only a few are the best are able to reach, um, you know, the final point. And so he was saying the more you sweat during the drills, during the training, the less you will bleed in the actual war. The more you sweat here, the less you will bleed there. So that's the same thing here. The more we are ready to discipline our lives, that is sweat it out, the less we will bleed in our war with Maya, the less we'll be defeated by Maya. So discipline is our power. Discipline is our strength. Discipline is our protection. And then the third thing, being ever ready. I remember last some time back we had um, visited San Diego, and there was a big uh, uh, aircraft carrier which uh, has gone out of commission, but that has become a museum. So we went to visit that. It was uh, a joy to actually go through the entire ship. It's a huge ship, and it took us many hours to actually see everything and know everything. And there, they then took us to where these sailors, you know, who are the ones who would then, you know, Air Force people who sleep in that, um, in, in the ship and their bunkers and they're very tiny bunkers, unbelievably tiny bunkers. And so they sleep in this, but before they sleep, their entire, you know, dress, shoes, gun, everything has to be very nicely organized. And so when the siren comes that some uh, danger is coming towards um, the ship, immediately they have to, within, they have a time of about three or four minutes, they have to report back to the deck. So they don't get time. It's not like they can, you know, say, oh, I'm not ready. I need more sleep or my shoes are not ready. My clothes are not ready. No, everything has to be ready and organized. And as soon as the siren comes, the alarm comes, they have to rush onto the deck and be ready to, to fly or ready to do whatever else is needed. So I feel as, a, as Baba's children, this is what Baba has said, and I take this as my own responsibility that I have to have these three, three things in my life. So the first thing is discipline. The second is fearlessness, or courage, unwavering courage. You know, and the third is um, is, is being ever ready. And I was thinking so many times, you know, we, we hear these things and I hear from Baba's children, I'm afraid of driving, I'm afraid of doing this, I'm afraid of morning, I'm afraid of evening, I'm afraid of snow, I'm afraid of rain, or whatever, small things many times. But I was just thinking and talking uh, to myself that if I hold on to any fear whatsoever, then can I be truly called as part of God's spiritual army, the most elite army in the universe of all times, yeah, at all times. This is the best of the best. And so I cannot say that I am afraid. All right, so here, Baba is seeing us as a spiritual army. All of them were engaged in tapasya according to their capacity. So we are all engaged in tapasya according to our capacity. However, what Baba is wanting is that, 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 that a more, uh, a higher level of intensity in the fire. So Baba has said 
that within the gathering, the impact of the fire of yoga was definitely good, but it wasn't powerful enough for the destruction of the world. There was force, but not full force. Yeah, so it's very sweet that the, how Baba says, you know, Baba pumps up our, uh, you know, self-confidence and says such nice things that there is force, but he wants us to go to the next level that it is, there is no not full force. We have to have that. Then, then Baba says that they don't have the full force through which destruction could immediately take place at one go. That is through which the old tree could finish. And for that, what do we have to do? What is Baba expecting from us? Put Father Brahma's thoughts into the practical form. Love the Father and be cooperative in this unlimited task. Love the Father, the Shiv Baba, and be cooperative in his unlimited task. Yesterday, Sakar Muni for you. Today, Sakar Muni talks about courage too, right? That we, and not, pardon me, about co being cooperative, becoming Baba's helpers. We have to become Baba's helpers. Somehow or the other, we have to figure out how we can help in the Father's unlimited task. So, however, it should not be at some time later. That also is very important. See, one is what we are able to do. The other is when we are able to do. If I can do great things, but I, I do it at a time when um, it's not needed, when the real time is needed is gone and I do it, what's the point? You know, on the other hand, if I'm doing it now, but I'm not doing it fully. So Baba wants both of these things to happen at the same time. Doing this unlimited task Becoming cooperative, you know, in this, in this the task that Baba has created, but do it now. The full force has to happen now. And I, and I was thinking if someone comes to our place and say if for that, that person is hungry, if, if we have food, but, uh, you know, we, we don't prepare food at that time and we give the food six hours later, then there's no value to that food, you know. So we have to do it when it is needed. And the need is now. The time is now. That's what Baba is emphasizing. Be cooperative in the unlimited tasks. And of course, love the Father, but not at some time in the future. Now. Okay. So this is such a beautiful mulli. With that, we end the first mulli. Now we can go quickly to the second mulli. And then Baba takes this aspect of army. Again, the army that challenges Maya, only the army that challenges Maya can have its flag hoisted. Now, this is very deep, very intense. Think of it. You know, I often in classes, I ask people, um, do, you, do you feel that you are ready to challenge Maya? And invariably, I get the answer that um, I that I don't need to challenge Maya. Maya comes to me anyways, constantly. You see, so one is Maya coming to me constantly. Um, but on the other hand, think of it. Um, uh, do I have the courage to challenge Maya? Yeah, so let me ask you. Yeah, do you feel that you're ready to challenge Maya? Do you want to challenge Maya? Do you want to take this? Um, up, you know, as a challenge to Maya. Say, Maya, come, come, come. Huh? You can do nothing to me. I have Baba with me. Huh. Very interesting. So let's listen to what Baba has to say. Baba is saying he wants the army to be ready. So the instrument source in the corporeal form have to intensify their speed of preparing the army. So the onus is on the instrument source. See, we can't expect students to rise there unless we instrument source, you know, kind of pave the way for them so that they can follow. So intense me speed means they have to do this quickly, sort of like in real time. So quick means that you do something practically as soon as you think about it, your thoughts and deeds should be equal, the plans and the practical form should be equal. If I think of it now, I do it 10 days later, that won't work. But I think about it, that I'll do this, 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 and this, but I do very little at the end, that won't work either. So Baba is saying to 
have equality in thoughts and actions is the sign of perfection. So we have to take ourselves to the perfect state. But if my thoughts are great, uh, but my actions you know, are nothing, then what will that do? So thoughts have to translate into actions in real time. Right. And then Baba says, so now prepare such a group that everyone who sees that group would receive courage and enthusiasm and just begin to follow them. So this Murli is really for the instrument source and all those who want to take the responsibility of serving others. Again, to the responsibility to create a path for others to then follow. So create such a group that everyone who sees the group would receive courage and enthusiasm and begin to follow them. Just as the sample of Sakar Baba makes the effort of effort makers very simple. Huh? Brahma Baba can do it, why can't we? In the same way, create such a sample that the effort of many souls becomes very simple. Have you prepared such a group? It should be such a group of Shaktis who would be able to challenge Maya, no matter which authority Maya comes, uh, with which authority Maya comes, to challenge Maya. See, to challenge Maya. See, what is Baba saying? Those people are destined to be defeated anyways. And talking about Kauravas, they will, def you know, kind of, uh, they're digging a hole for themselves. Uh, so we, Pandavas, don't have to get scared of anything. So when someone who challenges them fearlessly in this way. So we have to challenge Maya, challenge the Kauravas. Not really Kauravas, Kauravas, but challenge Maya. That someone who isn't even afraid of the storms of Maya and constantly issues a challenge to be victorious comes into the group that is in charge of this army, then others can also follow. Yes? So we have to take ourselves to that state where forget about fear, you know, of any sort. We we are so bold, you know. Now with Baba's knowledge, with Baba's yoga, we need to become so emboldened that that no matter what, you know, we actually challenge Maya. Come, come, I'll show you. You know that kind of a thing. There's no fear whatsoever. So this, with this, we finish this morning, but I'm thinking, let's take a few minutes to create these um, visualizations for ourselves. Yeah, so first, if, let's go back to the first morning where Baba is talking about that fire of yoga. Baba wants the fire to be not just, just be a fire, to be a truly intense fire. Baba wants that the destruction of the old tree happens not just with force, but with full force. So let's take a few minutes together to create a fire within ourselves. And within this group, within our Baba's children, the group of Baba's children that we are, you know, all over the world, let's see a big bonfire being created, a fire so intense, so much force in that fire, that within minutes and within a very short period of time, the old tree can burn away, can be destroyed. So on one hand, definitely we are co-creating the new tree, but we have to also co-destroy the old tree. So let's take a few minutes to think. I'm going to mute myself. We, we can do this in silence. Or if you wish, your sister Raki wishes some music. She will play some music for two, three minutes. Or we can just sit in silence. Or maybe even I can play something.
Now let's see ourselves putting Father Brahma's thoughts into the practice. On one hand, there's this deepest love for the Father, and on the other hand, is total cooperation with Baba and his unlovingness. We are Baba spiritual army. The most elite army ever. With total discipline, total fearlessness, and ever ready. See yourself so fearless. But forget about being afraid of Maya when Maya comes to you. You have the courage, the fearlessness to actually challenge Maya.
Sister Rakhi had asked me to also talk about Raksha Bandhan because Raksha Bandhan season is going on, I think across the country, across the world, there are VK events organized for Raksha Bandhan and I could go into that, but I was thinking if someone wants to ask something, we could field a question or two. Or maybe a comment, a quick one, not an extensive one, maybe a quick one as to what did you take from this, this these two models. me it is being fearless this fear just comes knowingly unknowingly by its way and if i look at that uh, fear is also kind of maya challenging you so just correlating between these two murlis uh, that's one point for me to work on yes to fearlessness Om Shanti, uh, wonderful uh, brother, you have brought out uh, the uh, characteristics of a true army and uh, like in military, the courage, unwavering courage, I am a warrior, not a victim and uh, the enthusiasm, fearlessness, the total discipline, doing it now, now or never that kind of spirit, challenging Maya. And that's uh, something like, uh, I'm a Shiv Shakti, Pandav Sena. And uh, just imagine a state of mind where we are challenging, we are avahan karayam, paristitiyon ka. That is, just see how elevated that stage is. Like we are challenging the examination to happen so that we qualify and go to the, uh, go to the, you know, uh, next level. Uh, and uh, in practical form. So that is the confidence. It shows the confidence in the soul, power, the inner power, that we are challenging the adversities. And that's related to the more we uh, sweat in peace, more the less we bleed in war, the more victorious we'll be in war, the more certainty of the victories will be in the war. So the more we practice, and related aspect is the drill. The, in military, we do a drill parade. Every day, we sweat. We do the same commands again and again. We obey the same commands. And then we uh, do all this uh, battle practice, war games, and uh, you know simulated environment. So this is all the practice what Baba expects us every moment we are on guard, we are alert, anything can happen, the response has to be perfect to any situation. So I think that's the beauty of a military. That's why Baba says spiritual army. And another aspect is aim. Ek goli, ek nishan. Always the aim has to be, you know, constantly be in the awareness. What is my aim? And my every thought and action has to be aligned with the aim. So I think it's a wonderful, uh, you brought out all these aspects, qualities of a truly a warrior soul, a victorious soul. Thank you, Baba. Om Shanti. Thank you, dear brother. See, one of the things I want to say about um, many, many times, um, there's another aspect, um, apart from these three, that Baba has talked about in Murli's in spiritual army. It's an object Murli. It's, a, it's not my own, but it's what Baba is saying. And the one more aspect apart from these three is obedience. If you remember, Baba has said that in object Murli's. So, so obedience is also an important aspect of being in the military. But now going back to this challenging Maya, and so many times I hear from Baba's children, they say, you know, we don't want to challenge Maya. Maya comes anyways. And constantly we are fighting for Maya. If we challenge Maya, if we challenge adversities, if we challenge problems, 
first of all, you know, I want to take a couple of moments just to explain what really challenging Maya is. It's not necessarily that you go and say, come, 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 not like that. But many times just doing something more than what you're doing, taking the next step is challenging Maya. So when you are in status quo, you know, you're doing every day I'm doing Murli, every day I'm doing this, every day I'm doing, you know, following the simple disciplines, it's, it's, it's status quo. So say today I, morning I wake up and I say, or tomorrow morning for me, because it's eight o'clock in the night right now for me. So tomorrow morning I wake up and I say, hey, I want to do a different, a little different type of service. Maybe I haven't helped the African Americans. I want to do that. Maybe I haven't helped the Spanish speaking people. I need to do that. Maybe I need to go to the library and you know look at the intellectuals. Maybe I need to go to the prisons and serve them. So when I go out of my status quo, my comfort zone, is automatically, in a way, I will challenge Maya. So that's one thing. But second thing, also just to understand that, which I have been talking about incessantly in many of these monthly classes, you know, in smaller groups, that actually when you challenge Maya, Maya will come less. You understand this paradox because people always think, if we challenge Maya, Maya will come even more, and we can't even handle the Maya that comes off, you know, on regular, on a regular basis. Then what will happen if we challenge Maya? Then we'll be overwhelmed by Maya. By Maya, and I always tell them, actually, it is the other way around. When challenged, then Maya is going to run away for further away. You know, like when take an example of let's say Mike Tyson, one of these, you know, boxers, and he's there, strong, confidence was what, another word that brother was saying, right? So say Mike Tyson is saying, come, come, fight me, then people will actually run away from him. So similarly, when we, you know, have that confidence and say to Maya, come, come, I'm not afraid of you, I challenge you, then actually Maya will run away much quickly and further away. All right, so hopefully that answers that question. And since the time is short, uh, Sister yeah, Sister Raki, oh. should I go on to talking about Raki? Oh. What would you like to do, Raki, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sister, can I just share something? Please. It was such a nice, this is one of the topic really in the knowledge which really, you know, pulls. Knowledge of Baba is there, but that is an experience that's something close to your heart. But this is close to an action plan for the right future. And when you were telling me army, I remember that pre-meeting which the army commander used to have with the colonels and all, with maps and all showing them, like, see, this is what is this, this is what is this, this should be our strategy, that should be our strategy. And they, it's that time he addresses the commanders. So this is just an address given by our commander to us. And he has given us the whole map. He, as I put in the chat box, he has told what is happening to humanity. He has told about everything about the what is wrong with the seed, what is wrong with the trunk, what is wrong with the branches, why they are sagging, what should the Sanjeevni thing be given. So this is just a commander addressing his colonels, his army, which is me. So I take this like commander, like you gave two qualities, he said, discipline perfect because follow orders fearlessness naturally if i go with my weapon and then say oh my hands are shaking i can't do but i also like one thing ever ready if suppose my things are my weapon is not ready i am not ready uh, i'm not ready to listen when the commander says shoot i have to shoot i cannot even think oh what's going to happen the commander is wrong maybe he didn't see properly the enemy no whether it's wrong or right i go ahead whether i lose my life or anything that's an army that's the discipline i think which baba wants so that one aspect what baba says is as you said rightly volcanic remembrance so if i have that fire in me of remembrance and i can go on to that i can take the tree in my beautiful hands and I can bring it back to life with all the branches. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so shall I quickly go into what Rakhi Ben 
and asked me to talk about Rocky Ben. Is this a good time for yes, me? Yes, brother, we can. Yeah. So, really speaking, you all know about Rocky, anyways. There's so much um, that uh, we've heard in Baba's Murdi's about Rocky, Raksha Bandhan. We have the word Bandhan. Again, it goes back to discipline. You see, how can a Bandhan be of any good? You know, Bandhan is bondage, but that is one bondage that frees us from all other bondages. You know, again, going back to discipline, a life of discipline frees us in so many beautiful ways, frees us from, from misery. You know, there's the saying that, you know, that um, either there is pain of effort, making effort, or there is pain of repentance. Yeah, so this pain of effort would mean pain of discipline. So pain of being in a bondage, one bondage, this Raksha Bandha, that is the bond of love, pure love. Pure love with God would mean following all that God is telling us, following the disciplines of you know, that have been put forth by Baba himself, God, the highest authority. That bondage, yeah, is, is a pain, a little bit of pain. Uh, it's, of course, it's a little pain when we wake up early in the morning and go to Murli class. We could be sitting in, you know, in, at our homes or we could be sleeping in our beds, come, you know, with dress and comforters and whatnot. So we go through that little bit of pain, but that pain then frees us from the pain of repentance. That's the most important thing that we, we need to understand. But then there are other aspects which, you know, when, right, I'm sure you have read and you've heard which Baba talks about is, you know, the other things that we do in Raki, and one of which is this aspect of, of this tilak, this chandan that is applied to the forehead. And who doesn't know about chandan, that it is cooling, that it provides fragrance. And of course, it's a reminder, tilak, that we are souls. So it is really the bondage between, between the soul and the supreme soul that we are tying ourselves to God, tying God to ourselves. There's this beautiful bond of love is being created between us and God. That's a, that's a tilak the lack of awareness, but then also the coolness of the sandalwood paste and the fragrance. So we have to be cool, cool no matter what. Yeah. We cannot get upset. And today's Murli was about that. Do not upset. Not, for you, yesterday's Murli, do not, do not get upset. Do not sorry. And I was thinking, you know, we get upset at the drop of the hat many times. Oh, you know, this and this, this thing somebody said, and I feel felt offended. Uh, that person did this and I felt offended. So, you know, we have become, you know, in the world, actually, we've become quite a bit of touch me nerves. But how we have to go beyond all that and remain cool, you know. Whatever Maya throws at us, you know, the curved balls that are thrown to us by the universe, we have to remain cool. And that coolness is going to spread from us along with the fragrance of virtues. So we have to develop virtues within ourselves, the divine qualities of love and kindness and compassion and respect and generosity, all these beautiful qualities we have to uh, create. You know, in science, we are, um, these, these positive psychology people are now saying that all of these qualities can be developed. And we know now, Baba has told us that these are the inherent qualities of the soul. In fact, we don't even have to develop. We just have to allow these to emerge from within us. You know, they are in a can. We have to just, you know, cut the, the lid of the can and so that all of these qualities can come up. And from us, from when they come up, they come up in our in our day-to-day um, -day existence, then there's going to be a spillover effect on others. So Rakhi is the time for us to, to spread divine qualities, to remain calm, remain cool, not get affected by whatever things are happening to us, with us, for us, around us, and just spread this fragrance, spread coolness. And remember that we have to continue to stay in that bond with Baba, with love, like that bondage, which will free us from all of the bondages. Once again, 
there are two types of pains. One is the pain of discipline, pain of effort, pain of this bondage of following Baba's disciplines, or this pain of repentance. So, you know, if we are not ready to go through the pain of discipline, then tomorrow we'll have to go through the pain of repentance. Today, if we go through the pain of discipline, in tomorrow, which really is not pain, actually. For a little bit, it might, but very soon, you know, it's just because we have messed up our habits so much. We're so misaligned, you know, with, with uh, the laws of the universe. That's why there may be a little bit of pain, a little bit of struggle. But once we do that, you know, um, and I'm saying all this because I'm sure each Baba's child on this group on this call is already, you know, disciplined, following all the, you know, the laws of the universe that Baba has explained to us, but maybe on YouTube or wherever this is going to be posted and other people will hear. So that's an important thing. The more I follow the disciplines, the more I will be free from the pain of repentance. All right. And I think with that, I can end here. There's a lot we can talk about, Rocky. There's a lot we can talk about other things. But I think I want to respect time and we can end here. Yeah, we can move on to a short meditation before we close, brother. Okay. All right. So should I guide it? Yes. Okay. So let's together create this bond with God. Let's see ourselves sitting right in front of God. Our right hand outstretched. Right? And Baba is tying this Rakhi on us, on our wrist. And with that Rakhi, yes, this brother has said discipline by the other yes. The discipline is going to make me by the other so feel Baba tying this Rakhi personally to you. And with that tying, it's not just a ritual, not just a ceremony. It's, it's a true reminder that I have to follow the laws of the universe. I have to keep a disciplined state of existence. The discipline of truth, of honesty, of purity, of inner cleanliness, of doing the right thing, no matter what. Whatever the adversity, to do the right thing is the bond, the thread that Baba is tying on our list. See yourself making the vow, the promise to uphold these principles, to protect these laws, and to follow them diligently. Say Baba personally applying Tilak on your forehead, reminding you not just that your soul, that is very elementary actually, what kind of soul you are, what kind of soul each one of us is. True spiritual army, true yogis, fearless, disciplined, ever ready, obedient. Ready to challenge Maya. And the sandalwood place, reminding us of the divine qualities, the divine virtues that are inherent to the soul. And the fragrance of these divine qualities 
that are becoming manifest in our lives. Let's pray for us, everyone around us. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Shwetang Bhai. Thank you, Divine Family. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 a.m. Till that time, have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you, dear sister.